Almost every single week, there is something new that is happening in the world of AI. And this week is also no exception. Llama 3.1 just dropped. It's crazy big with the parameters. Not just only it's crazy big, it's also customizable, fine-tunable. And with that, a lot of things are happening. So in case you're new here, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. My name is Hitesh and we are diving into the world of AI. A lot is happening in the world of AI, which is of my interest. I didn't took much of the interest in the Web3 world, but this AI, I am heavily, heavily invested. So much so that we have injected AI almost in every phase of building our content, in our tech, the products that we are using, and we are not even shying away from buying and trying new services, even if they are paid. We are okay with that. We just want to try as much as we can with the AI. In this video, we're going to talk about uh, the 3.1 model of the Llama. I'll walk you through a little bit of the open source side of it, the AI and the closed source side of the AI. And we'll be studying about the research paper, not the research paper, but actually the article that is being published by the Lama and a couple of newspaper things as well, which I'm not a big fan of it. And there is something that needs to be discussed around it. So let's go ahead and without beating the bush, let me just walk you through. So before we dive into this, yes, we are back on the Excali draw and we need to discuss a couple of things first and especially the open source part of it. I know this is not really a great statement to say, but hey, Facebook is leading the open source world. Not entirely, but up to a great extent. And if I just name out a few of these things, if I go ahead and name out, uh, for example, uh, React, which is really small, not that small. So if you have done any kind of web development, you know this thing, you know this really, really well, that React is totally backed by Facebook. And yes, there are, of course, individual contributors, there are great companies, there are great contributors, but hey, Facebook started this. Not only this, if I just go ahead and show you something more, if you have heard about mobile development, yes, again, Facebook is the creator of React Native and they are leading the segment, not only just by backing it up, but actually actively developing the product. And yes, of course, again, the point is still correct that individual contributors are there, companies are there. We also contribute a lot in the React Native and especially the plugin ecosystem. But the point is they are leading it and even GraphQL as well. And now this whole thing is being run and is the parent company behind them is Facebook. A lot of people don't like Facebook uh, just because they were involved in a lot of things. Exactly same thing happened with the Microsoft as well. Initially, Microsoft was accused by a lot of things, a lot of things they did also, but eventually people realized, hey, they are winning the war. And the uh, same thing is happening with the Facebook as well. React is already winning the game on the web. The React Native is heavily winning the game. Of course, there are alternatives like Flutter and Kotlin. I'm not denying that part. I'm not taking side of the Facebook. I'm just telling you what happens with that. And what happens with the React ecosystem is, if you go ahead and look onto this React e ecosystem, this was the React ecosystem. This is it, this much it. But then what happened after that is React got a few of the contributions. So these people went up and said, hey, we would like to extend the React a little bit like that. And then somebody else and came in and they said that, hey, React probably is not good, suitable for server-side rendering. We would like to add that capability. So they added this capability. Another guy came in and said, hey, not just this, we would like to extend a routing facility onto this one. So hey, another guy came up with a big contribution and routing capability. The other guy came in and says, you know what? It's really great, but it doesn't have that uh, inbuilt state management capability that well. So we'll build Redux, we'll build Zustan. So all of this came in. And there are a lot of companies now which are coming in and saying that, hey, you know what? We can actually bundle this up and call this as Next.js and whatnot and all these things. So ultimately, this is what happens in the open source world. You build something, people come in, they contribute, and eventually if the contribution is led into the great direction, you find yourself that, hey, a lot of people are using it. Not only the whole world gets an advantage of it, but as a company, you are also getting a lot of advantage with that. A lot of things which could have used your engineering time, your engineering resources are now being done by other people. So that's that's the great idea. And if you look at the same ecosystem, uh, that what's happening is uh, this is what the chat GPT is. And the problem with the chat GPT is it's already closed source. Yes, there could be contribution with building your GPTs and whatnot, but I don't know what's happening inside this box. As a developer, I am seeing that, hey, what's happening? I'm just allowed to use my own APIs. This is not the problem statement for all of the people. 
like every single company has their own use cases that medical field has their own use cases. They don't want to send their data over an API to chat GPT or any other company as a matter of fact. And there are a lot of companies who want to train their models, their documentation. They don't need heavy duty of those parameters. They want a little bit lightweight of the things. They want to do things on device as well. Pieces is one such company which is doing a heavy duty stuff on the on device only. So this would be really, really nice uh, in theory at least here that if there would be an open source model of these uh, open source LLM models, which we can contribute. And if we want it this big, we can keep it this big. If we want it to be shortened one, we can shorten it up. If we want it to make it big, we can make it big. If we want to add on more services, I'm allowed to add on services without even worrying about that, hey, am I allowed to do or not? That's the whole idea. That's the whole idea of why and how the Llama is going on. Now, a lot of people are debating whether putting this in the open world, like open source, is a good idea or not. And yes, as a programmer, you can understand it's yeah, open source is always a good idea. But a lot of people put up these kinds of news articles, which are really great for attention grabbing, but I don't really like them. You are saying Meta's new Llama 3.1 AI model is free, powerful. But when you add this line, risky, I'll also probably add that in my title as well to grab attention. But what are you trying to impact here? That uh, releasing the AI without guardrails, hey, this is, the bad actors are always going to be the bad actors. It doesn't really matter whether you keep it on the guardrails, you keep it closed source, you keep, put it as open source. Uh, stuff, when it's going to happen, it's going to happen. But anyways, they are charging, asking me to put a $5 to get access of it. I'm not interested in that. Coming back onto the point. So Llama 3.1, our most capable model with crazy four or five billion parameters. And the good part is you can actually shrink down your parameters. You can actually train the way how you want it. This is really the powerful thing about the Llama models and open source model. I never thought I'll be saying this word that Facebook is, or Meta as of now, Meta is leading this capabilities of open source models. So you don't need to go for all of this. You don't need to read like whole of this. I'll just walk you through with a couple of one. Uh, first of all, supports eight languages, including a Llama 4 or 5 billion. And uh, most of the stuff, you don't need to worry about that. Uh, and yes, they also address this uh, about the security safety tool, Llama Guard 3, Prompt Guard. Yeah, like that's going to work. Anyways, it's, it's all up to who is using that. So they all go for model evaluation. And what I really like about this kind of a model is it's not specifically designed for X purpose, like for coding or for medical or for research work. You can actually fine tune this model the way how you like it. You want it to be good in coding perspective. You can make it good in coding perspective. You can fine tune the parameters like that. And you don't need to be a genius scientist or the mathematician to do so. There are enough tools and capabilities and even sub tools which are available in the cloud, public cloud like AWS and all of this, which can help you on that. And definitely I'm planning to make more videos on that. Uh, so embeddings tokens will we'll definitely go for more on that. Uh, so subscribe the channel for that. I'll be talking about that. What I really also like about this that there is also a letter, kind of a letter that was released by Facebook uh, directly by uh, Zuckerberg and open source AI is the path forward. So Facebook or Meta is leaning towards the open sourcing of the AI and trying to see that can they bring in the community so that they can help them to build much better version of it. And the other side is the chat GPT, which is the close side of it that, hey, we'll develop it responsibility, we'll do it responsibility. Facebook is taking a side that, hey, let's put it out in the world. Let the people fine tune it. Let's people find out all the vulnerabilities and all the things that can go wrong and report it. And as a community, we'll develop it. I don't know which one is right. I'm probably not capable enough to judgment, pass that judgment. But what are your thoughts on this? Is the closed source path is good? Just let me know in the comment section. Or do you prefer the open source approach of the AI? This is a big, big debate. So they actually back to back uh, compare that in the whole of this letter. Uh, Linux, they compare it a lot and they also give it a whole reference in this entire article about uh, the mobile, how the mobile got started and Apple is dominating the ecosystem. So that's there a lot. Yes, I did spend a lot of time <laughs> in reading all of this. Uh, most important part is at here. So open source is good, why it is good. Uh, we need to train, fine tune and distill our own models. I am with 100% on this part. Not everybody needs all those powerful capabilities. Some people need just the creative capabilities. Some people need just the coding capabilities. 
I love coding capabilities, but hey, research work, there is a different capability, different model that needs to be distilled down for that. I'm onto this. A lot of my friends uh, whom I've talked and discussed a lot, they are actually very bullish on this one, on device task. They don't want the information to go out from the devices. They want to train everything in, in the device itself. So for this, you, you cannot actually have the large models. It's not feasible. It's not workable. You need to shrink down the models for that. So this alone, the same 3.1 model can be shrinked down to that version as well. That's very interesting. And having these tools to shrink it down directly in the cloud with one-click access, oh man, that's really nice. Uh, we need to control our own destiny and not get logged uh, into the closed vendor. This is where uh, Mark is really bitter on the Apple and uh, they he doesn't like to be anything to be closed source. Oh man, that's cute. <laughs> Anyways, uh, we need to protect our data, uh, again, the on-device. We need a model that is efficient and affordable to run. This is the most interesting part of the entire of this one. So notice here, it says developer can run inference on Llama 3.1, which is a 4 or 5 billion on their own infra at roughly 50% of the cost uh, using the closed models like G GPT-40. Now, this is really nice because they call it as 50% of the cost. But what is the cost of running this 4.0 model? That is the question. Of course, that shouldn't be answered here because otherwise people will get scared. But hey, this shows the efficiency of the model that it is 50%. I think they are taking notes from the handbook of Apple that, hey, just show the things on one chart only, one line in the chart. Don't worry about saying the other part of it or are the accurate information. But hey, what do you think about it? 50% of the cost using the model of 4.0. But what is the cost? Anyways, uh, we want to invest in the ecosystem that goes to be standard for the long term. So a lot of people see that open source is advancing at a faster rate than the closed model. Hmm, that's debatable. Every single time the chat GPT rolls out, the models are catching up right now. What I feel, I feel like that. All people are doing is a catching up game. Their demos are nice, their presentations are nice. Uh, the, all the open source models, they need to have much more of a better rollouts and systems. Probably just me, but hey. And they want to build their systems on the architecture that will give. Definitely open source is much more customizable according to your needs, just like Linux was. And it's winning the game. So maybe that could be the future of these open source model. And rest of the stuff is just very marketish. So why open source AI is good for meta and all of these things. This is very marketish. I'm not <laughs> gonna read it in front of you. But yeah, why open source AI is good for the world. Very, very gimmicky, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, good fun stuff and all of this calling out about Google and <laughs> all these Apple ones and all of this. And last message, I like this. Uh, let's build this together uh, with the past Llama models. Meta developed uh, them for ourselves, uh, then released them. Uh, same for the React as well, but didn't focus much on building a broader ecosystem. This is where I'm interested. Now the Meta is actually focused on building the broader ecosystem. This means... Uh, actually, I watched the entire videos and talks. Facebook is actively participating with the public cloud providers as well, like AWS and Google and uh, Azure and all these things. And they are trying to make sure that this whole ecosystem of training the data, lowering down your model, scaling up your model, all these tools are directly available in the public cloud. So you can focus just on building the things as an application engineer and not about the research part of this. This is all being taken care. You just feed the data, train the model and make the model more accessible and more intelligent on your domain, not all, all the general domains. This is uh, the point where I like. Anyways, so I thought just to have a quick video around what's happening in the world of AI, things that I like. And yes, we are heavily, heavily uh, using and investing in the AI tools as much as I can. We are learning it constantly once we have enough of the data about learning journey, injecting in the production grade application, then surely a lot of fun tutorials are about to be on the way. So subscribe the channel uh, for more AI content. And of course, development is our part that we do day in and day out. And don't forget to answer all the questions in the comment section. I'll be reading all of them. And I just came to know uh, from the Google conference that a lot of people in these big tech companies also read all the comments on my channel. So go ahead, give them some feedback. Uh, they will be directly reading them. That's it for this video and let's catch up in the next one.